I built this motor that can run itself and power a small LED without the need for a battery. Stay tuned so you can find out how exactly I built it. This is a heavy gauge uninsulated copper conductor. Here, I have some uninsulated aluminum wire. I will need to use some cotton string. This is the basic principle of how this motor operates. In other words, this is the basic principle of how the motor gets its energy to run itself. I made the spool which will become the electromagnet. I wrapped the cotton around the uninsulated copper conductor approximately 100 plus feet in length. For electrolyte, I am using salt and water since they're less acidic, although a gel battery electrolyte would perform better. First, the water goes in the empty container. Next, salt goes into the water. Stir everything thoroughly until the salt is dissolved. The copper conductor, which is covered in cotton, has to be immersed in the solution for at least a couple of hours. It's time to wind the coil. All three conductors have to be wound simultaneously. The aluminum wire and cotton-covered copper wire will generate electricity. The insulated magnet wire is installed between each set of wires to prevent short-circuiting so that an electromagnet can be made. This is what 10 rows of coil looks like. At 15 rows and 180 churns, the coil is finished. The insulated magnet wire does not generate electricity, but can be used so that the energy generated by the other two wires can run through the magnet wire to generate an additional magnetic field for a stronger electromagnet. The coil does not behave the same as an ordinary coil. There's a voltage potential between the aluminum and cotton covered wire, which can power a load, but that does not produce an electromagnet in the coil itself. The wires need to be crisscrossed. If they're crisscrossed one way, the coil will generate north polarity and push the permanent magnets away. If it's connected another way, the coil generates a south polarity and attracts the permanent magnets instead. The coil will begin to dry beginning with the outside layer first by depositing white residue which is salt. It looks like the coil generates about 1.3 volts DC. The current fluctuates between 50 milliamps when under a load to 250 milliamps when the coil is not under a load. The rotor is made up of 3 8 of an inch acrylic and 4 sets of 4 1 inch by 1 8 of an inch neodymium permanent magnets. Also, I am using low friction bearings. The coil is able to push against a permanent magnet. The voltage potential in the coil is only 1 volt DC and can power a small DC motor. The coil is very heavy. I ran this motor non-stop for 10 days. I only stopped it a few times to measure the voltage and current. As you can tell, the coil is slowly oxidating but still running. The motor does not have an on and off switch. Everything is permanently connected except one more connection between the last conductor and the reed switch.
For timing, I am using a reed switch, which is a magnetic switch. That's where the clicking is coming from. I connected an LED through a diode, but since the voltage potential in the coil is only 1 volt DC, it is not able to lighten up the LED because the LED requires 3 volts DC to operate. However, the back EMF of the coil produces above 3 volts DC which can keep the light bulb lit up. This is a pretty cool invention. It runs by itself without any power input. This is actually an old invention and it's called the Nathan Stubblefield coil. He actually used an iron wire in the design instead. The best part about this motor is it can run day and night, not affected by sunlight or wind. The only limitation is the coil. I think the coil can be built where it's inserted in a clear flexible tubing filled with electrolytes so the coil never dries out. After 14 days of non-stop running, we notice the white cotton string is changing color to green, which indicates some oxidation is happening on the uninsulated copper conductor, which makes the cotton turn green. Also, the motor is running at 80% of what it was capable of on the first day. The electrolyte is probably slowly drying out. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel, and also post a comment with your thoughts on how this motor can be built better.